Hey guys, this is your girl Miss Senseless and welcome back to my channel. A little different kind of setup. Anyway, um, I wasn't even planning on doing any videos. I have a few other videos and whatnot that, um, oh, hang on, my, um, my sandwich is right. I'm eating breakfast. Oh, God, my leg. I am having tea this morning because... I'm not really bringing the tea, but I'm just bringing some stuff. I am having my morning breakfast, which is cinnamon raisin bagel with Philadelphia cream cheese. And my morning tea I'm having is by this company called Twin. You can find this in um, Walmart. And it is chai tea. Yes, like I said, I wasn't planning on coming up here to speak about nothing. But I saw something this morning on the shade room. And I want to address this. I already do. First and foremost, um, also I've been working on so many different things. Plus work, being a mama. And plus the kids that went back to school. So yeah. Anyway, I know it's like a lot of cream cheese, but it's not. Well, how y'all been doing? I know I ain't been uh producing anything. First of all, work and work. Try to um drag me for this because it is a very sensitive topic but what i saw this morning on the shade room was chris Cuomo. we already know about his brother uh the governor mario Cuomo. is it mario or the dad because i'm thinking daddy or that daddy died but anyway but the brother he resigned because of sexual harassment allegations Okay, so this morning I see on the shade room the story. Um, it's shown by Shelly Ross, um, and she was a, a veteran television journalist and former executive for the for producer for ABC and CBS. And CBS. All right, and here go. It's about I guess. A situation that happened back in 2005. 2005. Now we in 2001, and we're talking what 16 years ago. That's what I have a problem with. But first of all, okay, um, this is what she said. She said I'm, I've gotten different different clips of the story from New York Times. And she just came out like six hours ago. She said, I was Chris Cuomo's boss at NBC News for nearly two decades. That's how the story started. And I'm a regular viewer of CNN today. So I've long watched how he communicates on the camera and witnessed at times how he behaved behind the scenes. This year, as he escaped accountability for advising former Governor Andrew Cuomo, that's his brother, you know, during his sexual harassment scandal, two months crystallized for me on how Chris performed. So I guess what she's saying is she doesn't like, you know, she watched pretty much how he, you know, of course that's his brother, you know, and he of course is big on CNN if you don't know that. So he, I guess she watched and behind the scenes how he had handled it. We don't know what was being said behind the scenes. We only know from what he spoke about on CNN. Okay. I'm from New York and you know I've always watched them um, 
So we don't know what happened behind the scenes. We only know about what he spoke. And then at some point, he did not want to address the situation on CNN because, of course, it's his brother, you know, and he don't want to say, you know, whatever he want to say, what is right or wrong, he doesn't want to put that up front. Okay, kudos. Anyway, so, hold on. Here it goes, she says, now, I think, now that I think of it, I'm ashamed I read the subject line of the 2002 email Mr. Cromo wrote me. One after hour after he sexually harassed me at a going party, at a going away party. Excuse me, let me read that over. Now that I think of it, I'm ashamed to read the subject line of a 2005 email Mr. Cromo wrote me one hour after he sexually harassed me at a going away party for the NBC colleague. At the time, I was the executive producer of the ABC Entertainment Special, but I was Mr. Cromo's executive producer at Primetime Live. And just before that, I was at the party with my husband, uh, who sat behind me on the ottoman, sipping his Diet Coke as I spoke with work friends. When Mr. Cuomo entered the up, Upper West Side bar, he walked toward me and greeted me with a long bear hug while lowering one hand to firmly grip and squeeze the cheek of my butt. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got any cakes. Wait a minute. This is what he said. I can do this now that you're no longer my boss. He said to me with a kind of cocky arrogance. No, you can't. I said, push him off me at the chest while standing back, revealing my husband who had seen the entire episode at close range. We left quickly. Perrier. Perrier. I decked him up. I decked his ass. Okay? Because you ain't touching me. I'm my man. I'm my husband. Okay? That's very good. Okay. Now, we're going to get into the email. Soon after I received from Mr. Cuomo about being ashamed, he said, had been. But my question today is the same as it was then. Was he ashamed for what he did or was he embarrassed because my husband saw it? He apologized first in his email to my very good and noble husband, which he should for putting, for putting up, for uh, my noble husband and then to me for even putting you in such of a position, Mr. Cuomo said. This is a sincere apology. I've always seen it and attempted to provide myself with legal and moral coverage to evade accountability. You know, so, of course, he apologized to her in a sincere email. You know, but the problem is he apologized for what he did and which he needed to be accountable for what he did at that time. You know, this is back in 2005, okay? And if he sent, once he sent that email, I can say if once he sent that email to her and to her husband apologizing, she should have also addressed it with the network and let them know what had happened. You know, if once she wants some type of accountability for the action that he took upon her, address it to the network. Let the network also get involved and deal with it. Now, let's... Fast forward a little bit, okay? This is September 2021. And at the end of this long article in the New York Times, you guys can read it. She says, I'm not asking for Mr. Cuomo to become the next casualty in continuing in this continuing terrible story. 
So what the hell is you asking for then? Because you know what's going to happen. You've been a journalist, an executive producer, to know how this situation is going to get, how it's going to, what's going to happen, how it's going to unfold. Like, we know how the media runs with things. So, anyway, I hope to, I hope he stays at CNN forever if he chooses. If he chooses, now you just put this man career on the line right here 16 years later. I would, however, like to see him journalistically repent. Agree on air to study the impact of sexism, harassment, and gender bias in the workplace, including his own, and then report on it. Let's go back over there. She, want, she hoped that this is what would happen. She wants him to agree to study the impact of sexism and harassment. She wants him to agree. Like, she knows what's going to happen. He should also, she also wants him, he could host a series, he could host a series of live town hall meetings, documentary footage produced by women and experts of counselors, excuse me, calling it the continuing education of the coma. You know what? That's what she want to see what happened. But realistically, that ain't going to happen. That's not going to happen. He's going to get dragged. Okay. What I don't like is. The fact that you're bringing this up. If it was handled then. All of this should have been said then. And I forgot to put. You know. Look at the part where. He was at a party. He was at a party and he had on a t-shirt that said something about the truth, you know, and here it go, that's what made her bring this up because she felt that he was being a hypocrite by wearing that t-shirt that said the truth. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you dealt with that situation properly, then instead of just handing us a simple email, 16 years later, this man won't be in this situation now. I understand he put himself, don't get me twisted, don't get me wrong now. He put himself in this situation. He did that. He did that. He should have been accountable. He should have been held accountable when it happened. What I'm not liking with this whole situation is people are bringing up old situations from 20, 30, and 40 years ago. These people were held accountable back then. They want to be held accountable now. Now that they have built a life, built a career for themselves, they want to be held accountable now. They want, they want them to have this platform to speak on or whatever they want. Mm -mm. You know how the media is. The media going to tear his ass up. Period. All of them. Because one, <laughs> he's big on dog on CNN and who his brother is. What I honestly don't like is this. It's okay to hold on to these things and then wait till later and then talk about them. It's not okay. We as individual and especially parents, because I know I am. I am deaf 91. We teach our kids if somebody do something to you, you come home and you tell us. You go to a teacher and tell them. You let somebody know right then and there so that that person can be held accountable. I don't understand what happened. Like... I was in a situation when I was younger, best to believe it, right then and there. Was it handled accordingly? No, it could have been handled better. But the point is, 
it was handled okay it was handled and it happened to anybody else i don't know you know what I'm saying? But I'm pretty sure it probably didn't. But it was handled. Okay? That's the problem that I'm having. It's not okay for anybody to handle any woman or any man inappropriately. And they're not held accountable at that moment. Why are we waiting later on? To say it's okay to have them hold them, you know, what I'm saying accountable later. Why? I don't get. I, I don't get it. I looked at Harvey Weinstein, Bill Cosby, R. Kelly, all these men and all all these big names. These things happened years ago, years and years ago. You know, and here go. Y'all wanted them to be held accountable for the situation. Like I said, I am not condoning any of this. But what I don't understand is why are we holding that? Or because you feel comfortable? No. That person made you feel uncomfortable then. Okay? Let them feel uncomfortable then. Okay? Let them have be held accountable then for that. Okay, that's what I'm having a problem with. It. The relationship that my kids and I have. Let me tell you something. They come to me and tell me some stuff. I'm like, oh, hold on. That's a little bit too much to your mind. But you know what they said? They said, but Ma, I want you to know. And I'm like, all right. Let's go. And we go for me. My son, he's 18. Some stuff he needs to be talking to him, but a man, what? he come and talk to me. Okay? My daughter, same thing. You know, here I go. These people's situations need to be, they need to be held accountable now. It's not okay to hold these things in because then you're allowing it. And I'm going to sit there and say, yeah, allowing it to happen to the next person. We have to stop it at some point so it does not happen to someone else that person may not even be that strong you may be strong to hold it in but what happened to the next victim what happened to them how how does that help them that's the problem that I have Mm. We don't know if he's done somebody else before. We don't know. Seeing your story, seeing her story, Miss Shelly Ross, somebody else might come out. We don't know. But if you nip that situation in the bud then and there, it would not happen to someone else. This Me Too movement? Yeah, okay. You know, I don't get it. I just don't get it. Let them be held accountable now and then at that moment. It's not okay. It is not okay. It's not okay to hold on to it and wait till years later when these people become, you know, whatever they might become. It's not, it's not okay. Nip it in the bud and let them be held accountable for it. Well, now you want, she wants him to, you know, she don't want him to lose his job. But she wants him to repent, you know, repent and, and do a segment or a series on certain situations. He may not want to do that. He may not want to do nothing like that. And if he doesn't do it, God knows what CNN or, you know what I'm saying, what might say. And I cost him his job, I cost him his career. So.
But anyway, I don't drag me in the comments. I'm speaking, I'm not speaking for a woman. As I said, I don't like it. I'm not gonna ever like it. Speak up now. Don't hold on to her. She had her husband that was there to support her. And I know it's kind of hard to find support, but find someone that you can speak to and help you with, with it. No matter how big in the workplace you may be, whatever. You know, speak about it. Nip it in the bud right there and there. Prevent it from, from happening to somebody else. Do not hold on to that kind of information. Do not hold on to it. It's going to eat you up. Don't do it. There's too much of that happening. It happened. Let someone know. It's not okay. Whether it's in your household, it's in the workplace, I mean anywhere. Let someone know. Let them be held accountable. Don't care about what happens to them because they didn't care what they were doing to you. But on that note, I want you guys to also check out my blog. It's Michelle, Michelle. Yeah. Michelle. It's M I S H E L L A Y W dot com. W W dot M I S H E L L A Y. It's a, it's a blog. That's my website. Um, I have put it off for a while of doing this. So on there, you'll find some. Erotic stories, short stories, everything is free. You no, know, we have to do the sign up and you'll get newsletters on whenever I'm dropping anything, any new information. Um, so, so far I have, um, you know, Daddy's Cooking. Daddy's Cooking has been amazing. Wow, we want my cup. You Yes, I do. I use all them cups down there. Please put it back. Thank you. That's fine. Daddy's cooking is doing amazing. Everybody's loving it. I'll just also post up um, the drive through It's amazing. I also have something on there um, called how to... Jesus Christ. What is it? Oh my God. Anyway, it's positive. It's about positive energy. How to... Uh, how to have positive energy so I have that up there and I also have a little information on where I'm from so check that out um, I'm going to be posting again on there pretty soon so I you know I usually take like maybe like a week or so break anyway guys sorry about that my camera rudely shut off I don't know why but okay but anyway like I was saying at the end then um please check out my website it's www dot michelle dot com m i s h e l l a y good uh free reading content um reading material for uh anything i'll put up recipes i'll put up all different kind of stuff coming up in the future but anyway thank you guys for watching and subscribe like and comment and like i said guys please don't drag me in the comments also i will leave my blog information down in the bottom also don't forget to follow me on instagram at mi.shelly16 and also on the tiktok with the same thing all right thank you guys and i'm out